reading a bill for an act to amend the law relating to the definition of marriage and protect religious freedoms and for related purposes. Call the member for Leica. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I present the explanatory memorandum for the bill, and I move that the bill now be read a second time. Here, here. Here, here. Mr. Mr. Speaker, uh, as I'm sure you are well aware, I've been a long-time advocate for changes in this area and initially found the journey. Just, I don't think your microphone's on, or you're not. Oh. That's better. Okay, we'll start again if I could. Thank please, you. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As you're well aware, I've been a long-time uh, advocate for changes in this area and initially found the journey to be a very lonely. Uh, uh, but it was something that I was absolutely determined to do. In 2004, when the parliament changed the definition of marriage to exclude LGBTI Australians, I stood in the Liberal Party room and questioned, questioned the decision. I didn't understand why we needed to do this. Hadn't the LGBTI Australians been through enough? Why did we have to kick them, out, kick them on their way out the door? To me, it didn't make any sense denying any Australian equal status and the same level of dignity and respect is, in my mind, completely un-Australian. For me, it was really quite simple. I don't, don't understand how one section of our community should be treated any different to any other. Life is tough enough and sometimes very hard, and if you're lucky enough to find someone to join you uh, in the good and the bad, well, in my mind, it's fantastic. I strongly believe that couples seek wedlock are strengthening the institution of marriage. There has been a lot of commentary about the length, uh, the length of my advocacy and some very flattering remarks. In the media, I was labelled as fiercely heterosexual, far north Queensland, crocodile, bull catching liberal. Uh, however, for 12 or 13 years, I have been raising this issue to seek the removal of legal and financial uh, discrimination within the gay and the transgender community and also advocating for the right to marry for same-sex couples has been relatively short compared to those Australians who have had to endure these inequalities for their entire life. In 2007, I worked tirelessly to remove financial and legal discrimination from the gay and lesbian, that gay and lesbian Australians faced. In 2010, I came back from retirement because I felt I had unfinished business. I hope that uh, some of that business can be dealt with this week, uh, because a clear majority of Australians back this because they believe in a fair go. They are sick of politicians playing games with real people and real lives. In endorsing this legislation, I'd like to dedicate my advocacy to a number of very special people who have come forward and shared their life stories with me and helped to reinforce my commitment to why these changes are so necessary. The first two person I'd like to dedicate this to is Alana. And Alana, you know who you are. When my interest in dealing with discrimination in same-sex community was first reported in the mid-2000s, there were a number of news articles that focused on the motives behind my advocacy. One here by Glenn Milne, Warren Inch tells why he supports gay rights, how my mate become a woman. And uh, while I didn't actually participate in that interview, they clearly made, assum he made assumptions and had an interesting description of me and made reference to the friendship that I'd made many years before when I was living in Western Queensland. Imagine to my surprise when I received an email and I would like to quote the comments from that email. And I have that email, the original one here. And it says, you know, I was humbled to hear your slash our story in today's Sunday Mail. Later in the email, uh, Alana states, for the sake of those families that differ in composition to the Prime Minister's ideal, I hope you are successful in your campaign. As you know, there was absolutely no family in the country that could assume it would be immune from having a child, grandchild or a relative that is gay or transgender. There was certainly never a straighter family or community than the one that I was born into, and hopefully these families would then want that person to have the same rights in their relationships that others make, uh, other Australians take for granted. And in closing, she said, I'll give you an update of my life since we last saw each other. I went back to school, to university, graduating from medicine at the University of Melbourne and now working as a doctor in Victoria. A great success. 
I have to say, Alana, it was very inspirational and moving me at, at many time, uh, and moving for me. And many times that I felt pretty lonely in the journey in this place, I would often pull out your email and read it, and that reinforced my commitment to what I was doing. And I say thank you to Alana. I'd also like to acknowledge two others, possibly the oldest gay couple in Australia, according to media reports, John Chalice and Arthur Cheeseman. John was another of those that reached out to me in the early days to share his story with me. John and Arthur have been together for more than 50 years, totally committed relationship. They reinforce, uh, they reinforce the question in my mind, why shouldn't two people who have shared a life together in a strong and committed relationship have the right to choose how they express their commitment to each other? And I want to thank John and Arthur for sharing their story and inspiring me, and I dedicate my advocacy to you both. I understand that wedding plans are on the way, possibly in January. And uh, John, you actually look like you're going to be married before your 90th birthday. My heartfelt congratulations to you both. And finally, I'd like to dedicate my advocacy to another very, very special person, Kate Doak. Kate came to me as a journalist trying to understand my advocacy in this area, and over an extended period of time in my office, she eventually shared with me her own personal story, a story that I had the privilege of being the first person to hear. Subsequently, both myself and my staff, in particular Heather Beck in my office, have been there for Kate. And I thank you, Kate, for the inspiration, and again, I dedicate my advocacy to you. I'd also like to meet, mention Rodney Croom and David Scammell. When the media, media articles first appeared in my, for, about my advocacy, I received lots of responses from family and, gay, and friends of the gay community saying they wanted, me, wanted to come out and support me as well. But Ro, Rodney Croom and David Scammell travelled to Canberra and uh, they sat down with me and for the first time in my life they provided me with an insight into the inequalities and discrimination gay, gay people found and I uh, faced, sorry, and I thank them for the opportunity because without their contribution I may never have been aware of the issues and I may not have started on this journey. I'm not going to go into the technicalities of the bill other than to say that there's been a huge amount of effort put into it. The bill which the Senate passed uh, is a robust bill. A whole range of religious protections are already in place. As Senator Dean Smith, Smith said when he was stating, uh, tabling it, this bill reflects the most fundamental liberal and conservative values which our party stands for. Liberal because it delivers freedoms for couples to marry and conservative because it strengthens the social fabric and the uh, vital institution of marriage. This bill is about marriage and only about marriage. Nothing in this bill takes away the existing rights uh, or freedom. It doesn't create different classes or marriage. What it does is give same-sex couples the legal rights, the same legal rights as other couples. We have made sure that we have removed any element of discrimination in this bill while ensuring that religious freedoms are protected. The LGBTI couples will be free to marry the person that they love in a civil marriage, the freedom of, ma of ministers of religion and religious uh, marriage celebrants to only perform religious marriages in accordance with their religious belief, uh, beliefs remains unchanged. There may be amendments proposed and amendments uh, on free speech, discrimination law, education, charity law, uh, tax law, and these are all worthy causes and important debates, but they don't need to form part of this bill today. Australians are sick of excuses and they're sick of delays. The majority of Australians voted yes on same-sex couples being able to marry in this country that they call home in front of friends and family who love them. They did not vote for a new form of discrimination. Amendments uh, about unrelated issues, amendments which seek to delay same-sex marriage for the 61.6 per cent of Australians who made their preferences clear, or amendments which seek to unwind or remove any legal rights or discrimination protections will be opposed. Australians do, uh, did not vote for fairness uh, and equality see other legal protections peeled away in this bill. I announced my intention to, I announced my intention to introduce the bill back in 2015, but unfortunately that didn't occur because of decisions that were made to commit the coalition to a plebiscite. I didn't agree with the plebiscite and I was disappointed that I didn't have the opportunity to introduce my bill to the floor of the parliament. However, I did everything I could to, to focus, rather focusing on the process, uh, but to look for an outcome 
and uh, that process of that uh, plebiscite was taken to the 2016 election. It was during this period that there were a number of very special individuals that entered the parliament, providing an opportunity for us to work as a collective determined to get a vote on marriage equality in the 45th parliament. I'd like to acknowledge my good friend and colleague here beside me, Trent Zimmerman. The last time I wore this rainbow tie, I've got to tell you, was at Trent's maiden speech. He's a member for North Sydney. In front of me here, I've got Tim Wilson, a member for Goldstein. And of course, another fellow Queenslander here in uh, Trevor Evans, a member for Brisbane. All kindred, kindred spirits in this advocacy. Together, we committed ourselves to making sure that same-sex marriage was on the agenda and we'd have the opportunity to vote for it in this place. Special mention to my friend Dean, Senator Dean Smith, who is a member of the Joint Select, uh, Senate Collect, uh, Select Committee on the Exposure Draft of the Marriage Amendment, Same-Sex Marriage Bill, and who did an outstanding work in incorporating the findings uh, of the consenting report uh, from committee into the bill that we are now debating, which has already, of course, passed the Senate. I have to say I was not happy with the postal survey, and I expressed that view. But I have to congratulate Peter Dutton for this initiative. When he approached me, I suggested to him that it would never work, and I honestly didn't think it would. However, always, there's always benefit in hindsight. It probably was the best thing that we did in so much as the participation rate was extraordinary, uh, almost 80 per cent of registered Australian voters. And the fact that we got a vote of almost 62 per cent shows an absolute majority of Australians have come along with us on this journey. It certainly provides us with the opportunity to celebrate inclusion and diversity and is one of the biggest political mandates in, this, in the history of our nation. While, while there were great celebrations in Australia uh, when the result came through, I was in New York and let me assure you that this result wasn't just celebrated in Australia. It was celebrated around the world. And I remember driving home after a function in Lower Manhattan not long after the results were announced and seeing the Empire State Building lit up in rainbow colours to acknowledge this historic event. I'd like to acknowledge the team from the Equity Campaign who have been invaluable in their assistance and I value their support and their friend friendship. And that is Alex Greenwich, Tom Snow, Anna Brand, Janine Middleton, Tiernan Brady, uh, Clint McGilvray, Lee, Lee Carney, Corey Illum, and last but not least, Claire Dawson. There were so many others, but too numerous to mention, that made the Yes campaign such a success, and I thank you for that. In this place, we come here, we all come here to make a difference. And we do in so many ways through our electorate work and insisting nation, with national policy. However, it is rare that we have the opportunity to make a change such as we have achieved through this legislation and the profound positive impact it will have on so many lives, not only those within the same-sex community, but also their family and their friends. I have a responsibility to the Australian people this week. Uh, we have a responsibility to the Australian people this week. We must do what we believe is right. Who is it to say that another person should be denied equal rights or that their love is in some way lesser because of who they love? This bill will, ta uh, will take from no one. It simply makes our nation a kinder and a fairer place. Delaying equality for every Australian, from whether it be from Bundaberg or Fremantle, simply is not good enough. At the end of the day, life is too short. We must vote on this and get on with it. I know that there are many weddings planned in the near future once this legislation is carried through, and I wish all of those brides and all of those grooms the very, very best in their married future. Thank you.